up with the wealthy. Yeah. Don't care the about wealthy the product that they interact to make money because of it. Right? Yeah, don't care yeah. how good the product is. If the attitude is not right, that's it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the wealthy look out for the wealthy. So true. Mm. Yes. Yay. Do you know, Bishop, in St. Lucia, you have to you have to live in a certain place to be part of them. You have to frequent a certain part of St. Lucia in terms of entertainment to be part of them. You have to drive a certain I kind of car, difference. meaning caliber of car, not just model, caliber, not just the outside, the inside, the way it looks, the way it smells. You have to- Is there anything wrong about that? Sorry? Is there anything wrong about that? No, no, no. I'm just proving to you that they look out for each other. True. Yep. You have to frequent a certain beach. You have to um, travel at a certain time of the year. It's really, they really look out for each other. Mm -hmm. And they help each other to stay at the top. They help each other to stay at the top. So why is it that church folks are so poor? What is what, what is the problem? Yeah, it's so depressing. Yeah, it's, it's depressing and, and embarrassing. Yep, it is. Ninety percent um, ninety percent of religious folks are poor and broke. Yes. Most you see that one Bible verse. Mm -hmm. Ninety. You, you're, you're. Yep. Ninety percent of people who fast, who pray, who are. Uh, prayer warriors do prayer warfare. They are all broke, and they have yes, not and, and they have not asked themselves yes. why. Ah, yes, I remember when you said that, and I was thinking about it yesterday. And I look back at my life in Saint Lucia. People I knew who were doing those exact same things, and you are very correct. Yep, they are not rich. Yes. They they use yes. you see just as some people use alcohol as a crutch, as a, um, what they have to do to survive. Without alcohol, they cannot mm -hmm. survive. Alcohol is the means of them solving a problem, so they think. Others, it is sex. Others, it is gambling. Others, it is all different kinds of drugs. For some people, it is food. For the majority of humanity, they use religion as mm -hmm. they are, as they are, as they are. It means they are all cripples. They are all cripples. So they need they need a crutch to walk. They need a mm -hmm. wheelchair. Religion is the wheelchair for them. Yeah. So ninety percent of them will just die. Many will go to hell. Some will go to heaven, barely. And it's all as a result of being stupid, being mm -hmm. taught being taught to be satisfied with who you are be satisfied with the way you are born you're okay while the dominant class take control and exploit and enjoy life yep the so exploit Carl yep. Marx was correct when he said it's the opium of the masses well i won't go there so with him is. i will not go there with him he was correct 100 percent. he's correct he's correct yeah. The Chinese are mm -hmm. correct that they want to drive people away from religion. Go and work, go to the yeah. factory and have a job. They are correct. The only area in which they are not correct is that they are not balanced. There should be religion yeah. and there should be job. Mm -hmm. There should be religion, yeah. there should be pursuing of, of, of wealth. There should be the church. They sh so it, it, that's just what makes it correct. Balance, yeah. balance. There should be no difference between the two. The two should mix and functioning, and they should function as one. You should not tell the difference between this and that. Yeah. Like in some places you go, you see a priest, and he's a chef in a five-star hotel. 
but it's a priest in the church. That's what we are talking about. You see a medical doctor, he's a surgeon, but he's also a pastor. That's what we are talking about. You see a judge who is also a deacon of the church. That's, yeah. how, that's how they had it in the Bible. There was no difference between this is church, this is medicine, this is church, this is music, this is church, this is... No! This is the politician and this is the church people. No! That makes the politician to exploit the church folks. Yeah. There's nothing like, okay, this is business, one side church, one side. No! It makes the business to exploit the church people and the church people to become beggars. Let's go. My name is His Excellency, the Most Reverend Dikai Mary, and thank you for coming to our program today. I'm very happy to see you. Have you ever thought of how much God loves you? When you hear God loves you, suddenly, suddenly you begin to think about Suddenly, you begin to think about God sent his son, Jesus. That's all you think about. You are now a Christian. You're born again. You said the sinner's prayer. That's how you know God loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You do not look at the other side of how, how God, what shows that God loves you. The Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Ghost. God in there now. And there is more. How you really know that God really, really loves you. Let's, let's be balanced here. Because some people become born again and they become fanatics. They become idiots of the highest kind. Those are the kind of people who fill modern churches. How you really know that God loves you is when God begins to send you invitation. Samantha, write it down for me. Yeah. And Vicky. Okay. They keep make, let, let send that to me immediately while this program is on. You send it. Divine invitation. Divine intervention. And divine engagement. There are three things. Divine invitation, divine intervention, and divine engagement. Those are the ways you know that God love, the love of God is active in your life. When you leave this program or while this program is going on, I want you to think of the various ways in which you have said no to divine invitation, divine intervention, and divine engagement, and you didn't know it. Because number one, you've been praying without asking yourself, what part do you need to play to solve your own problem? And when you begin to do that, you will remove yourself from divine invitation. People say that I give away too much information and that's why people cannot catch it. They don't, they don't, they don't understand what I'm teaching because it's too deep. It's not for the average person, the average Joe. People want it to be broken down to ABC. And I think I'll begin to do that.
with divine engagement i want you to write down one more thing trying to find how what name can really qualify it we have divine we have divine what invitation we have divine yeah. intervention we have divine engagement okay. and now write down divine appointment those are the four things and this is how you see the activities of the holy spirit in action People talk a lot about destiny. They talk about calling. God called me. God chose me. People use that word a lot. God loves me. They use that word a lot. Every human being you see in the Bible, in sacred scripture, if you see God come for them through the different means, angelic visitation, angelic visitation, that is, they were visited by angels, they received a real dream from God himself from heaven. Or an angel appeared to them in a dream, or appeared to them physically. Or God sent somebody Long before God began to appear to David, God used Samuel to appear to David. We never see anywhere where God appeared to Joseph. He only gave him two dreams and he never interacted with him anymore. If he did, we don't see recorded in sacred scriptures. In fact, we, we don't even hear of God appearing to Esther or God appearing to Naomi and Ruth. But behind the scene, we know God is there. We don't hear of God appearing to Esther, talking to Esther giving her direction rather we see esther going to god we don't see god appearing to hannah or to abigail or bathsheba but we see them going to god we see hannah going to god we don't see paul the writer of majority of the little books of the bible of the new testament we don't see him looking for Jesus. Suddenly we see Jesus coming to look for him. We don't see Abraham going to look for God. But we see God coming to look for Abraham. We don't see Isaac going to look for God, although it's in a few places we can allude to that, but we see God coming to Isaac, appearing to him, talking to him. So why is it that for some people God came for them, for others they went to God, for others nothing is even spoken about God, and yet God is there with them. We see, we see how things happen that we know it is God. Number one, if you want to be loved by God, let go of fear in your life and stop giving power to other people, to other human beings. Stop giving them power. Your fear of this universe, your fear of people, your fear of failure will keep God away from you. 
Because God do not do business with people who are afraid of life. Who are afraid of going into life and making the most of it. And the best of it. God doesn't do business with them whatsoever. People who don't like to stay on a job. Or stay on a business that money is coming in every single day. They are making a lot of money. If you say that you own a business, I hope you should be prepared to be making at least 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 and upward. Then you are talking about that you own a business. If you own a business and nothing is coming in, you are just joking. You are a fool. You don't know what you are doing. If you cannot steady in a job, if you cannot have a job all your life, you live up for other people. God has nothing to do with you. Because it's a son. Not staying on a job and making money is a son. I hope you know that. I send a shout out to Alachi in Canada. Shout out to Vivian. And a shout out to Samantha. Thank you so much. I sent out one of the biggest shout out to Victoria. Vicky, thank you. The biggest investor. Thank you, Mama. We are not talking about that Vicky is praying. We are talking money here. Money talks. Everyone you've heard me mention their names. There is something you should know about them. They were men and women of good motive. They had right motive and good intention in everything. They were pure in their hatred for evil. And they were pure in the pursuing of the right things of life. They were not liars. They were not thieves. They were not deceivers. They were not manipulated in everything they do. Including the politics of their days. Another thing you will know about them is that they were willing. God saw in them that if he approaches them, that they will be willing. So when God approached Moses and Aaron, they were willing. When he invited, because when God make approach to you, that's what we call divine invitation. You can reject it, and God will move on. He will not think about it twice. If you reject divine invitation, so we talk about destiny, we talk about assignments, we talk about all kind of stuff. Why are you here? Uh, some people talk about um, you've been destined to be born again, destined to hell. Let me tell you the truth. As long as this earth is con concerned, since the fall of Lucifer, which has affected every other civilization come and gone. Nobody is destined for heaven and nobody is destined for hell. You decide you will perform that destiny. Ha ha! Ha ha So, so there's nothing like God already for new those who will accept Jesus those who will go to heaven, their names are already like the Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you that there are a hundred and is it forty-four thousand who have already the elders already there. They are all all of that. That's nonsense. That's rubbish. I have nothing to do with Jehovah's Witness. Because they, they don't know anything about scriptures, neither the Mormons. They don't know nothing about our sacred scriptures. They don't know nothing. You see them with their with their bags 
standing somewhere in the corner of the street selling a wick and watchtower. Shame on them. Or coming in blue in blue pants and white shirt with silly ties on their neck, coming to talk to you about the Book of Mormons. Shame on them. Normally, when I engage them, they run away. They don't want to engage me. Because when, when I engage them just in academic exercise of their book, as a historian, I see it to pieces. Because it cannot even stand proper, proper documentation of facts. It can't. If the Holy Quran, when I dissect it, cannot stand. Proper academic dissection. How much more moments are Jehovah's Witness? <laughs> Just as a lot, a lot of books that, that has the name religion, when I began to look at it, it's a book written by crazy, mad people. I'm telling you the truth. People who had men serious mental problems that can never be cured. They wrote some of those books. And you look at how their religion looks like. Mm -hmm. People who are suffering from poverty and mental illness are writing books for you to go and believe in. Tell me about it. And you are going to go and bow down to whatsoever that you don't even have an idea. God has given you the gift of choice making and willpower. Life is not a force. Marriage and love and romance is not a force. Having children is not a force. Being a leader is not a force. A ruler is not a force. Going to heaven or hell is not a force. The earth is an earth for choice making. The, this world is not a place where you come to prepare to go to heaven or hell. I don't, I don't buy that idea. That the earth is a place for preparation to go to heaven or hell. Which means that's all you came here to do. No, the earth is my home. Heaven and hell, that's their problem. I don't worry about going to heaven. Why? Because I already live in one. It's not in my imagination. I'm telling you in truth. I live in it. I live in that planet right now. Every born against peripheral Christian live in two planets. And is in charge of all the planets and galaxies. You have to know this for a fact. You don't need till you die to go to heaven. If you are waiting to die before you go to heaven, well, that's your own. That's what you want, not me. Immediately you got born again, you become an inhabitant of two different planets. And then you are in charge of all of the planets together with Christ Jesus. And then you become a co-owner of everything that is good. If angels have a choice, they can decide to stay with God or they can decide to rebel against God and move away. Satan did it. God did not tell him, hey, come back here. You silly bumpkin, you know, come back here. <laughs> Don't you know I made you and I have the right to break you? Why do you think you can rebel against me? Come and bow down here. And by the time he's hesitating, Gabriel or Michael are kicking his ass real bad. Boom, boom. And he bowed by force. No, God is not like that. That's the way they train some of you. They, they, they train you about the God of law. God that will destroy you if you don't obey. God tried it with Israel and it did not work. He tried to be a God of law to them. They couldn't keep it. He himself killed so many of them and he's like, I'm not going into this madness with these people. Let me be who I used to be. Let me be who I am. I'm not going this route with them. Somebody do this, you kill. Somebody do this, you kill. Even coming down to the altar of God, you will die. Trying to help God, he kills you. And God said, no, 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 no. 
I'm not for that kind of nonsense. I'm a God of choice. I give you choice making. I give you willpower. You decide what you want to do. That's why if your nation want to be a nation of fools, that's what it's going to be. That's why you have to decide that you want something. You must decide that you want something so bad. So bad. And you go for it. God is not going to make that decision for you. It wasn't God that made the airplane, electricity we see. It's not God that built the houses. You do it. Humans must do those things. Humans must. It's not God that made the medicine. It's humans. So when are you going to start thinking about, about your own life, what you can do to make money, and then it will help human beings at the same time? Because people have been asking me that question. Why then, if there is nothing like divine adoption, divine destiny, divine this, divine that, why did God call Abraham? Why did God choose uh, Jacob rather than Esau? Because, remember what God said to Samuel. Human beings look at the outward appearance, but I, God, looks at the heart. How dare I take it to be two things? You can take it to be one or both. Either or. It doesn't matter to me. I, God, look at the mindset and I, God, look at the kind of spirit that you have chosen to be. You are willing to be. So if you decide to be a rebel, that's for you. That's what you choose to be. That's why many of you get stuck in life. You get stuck because your children do not turn out to be the way you wanted to be so that, so that you go and celebrate and tell other people, Yay, hey, look at me, I succeeded. My child is a doctor. My child is a nurse. My child is an architect. My child is a surveyor, a civil engineer, a this, a that. It's all about competition. It's all about a show off. And yet, when your child did not turn out to be that and turn out to be a donkey, a carrier of the burden of the world, you don't like it anymore. You don't want to talk about it. It's a bad child. And you forget that children come for different reasons. You are just a carrier. Huh? You're just a carrier. Some children come to be a blessing. Others are highway children. They come to use you, eat you up, you spend your money, raise them, and they go on their way. Bye, thank you for your help. You not see them anymore. Others come to cripple you, to stay, they are not living home. They don't want to have no job. They don't want to do nothing. They just stay to eat and fight everybody until you decide to call the social services and they come and remove the person by force. You see a child who is 40, 50 years old is still living with mama and daddy. And if any of those of the other siblings come to the house, He's looking at them as though they are thieves. Mm -hmm. if, 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 if any of the siblings are with mommy and daddy in the bedroom discussing or somewhere in the back, in the back of, of front porch discussing important secret of the... That child wanna be... What are here? What, what are you guys discussing? Can I... Shouldn't I be invited into this discussion? Children that wanna be in charge in spite of the fact that they have not contributed a dime. You are going to face that. 
and you better know that you are giving birth to spirits. Every human being is a spirit and they are entitled to the opinion, they are entitled to their way of life, they are entitled to their religion, whatever they want to do. As long as it doesn't infringe on the rights of other people, then they are entitled to practice and to live their own life. That's why many, many of you parents are in trouble today because you are ashamed. You are living a life of shame. You want to tell me that your 15-year-old boy, 16-year-old, 17, 18, is selling drugs while living with you and going to school and you as a mother will not know. I don't think so. You, can, you cannot lie to me that you didn't know that your child was selling drugs until your child went and shot somebody and killed somebody and you say you didn't know. Are you serious? I don't believe you. You knew it. Because it's one of those things that you cannot hide. When a child is a prostitute, when a child is doing drugs, or when a child is selling drugs, there's no way that you will not know. If a child is a con artist and is stealing, there's no way you will not know. That child, that child is not making any money and is bringing home shoes, tennis shoes that cost 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Where do the child get that money? And the child will give you flimsy excuse. Oh, my friend gave it to me. Really? And you don't say nothing? You don't, you don't ask the friend, where did you get it? Oh, your mom asks too many questions. Your dad asks too many questions. I don't like your dad. And then you go home and start, and start troubling your parent. You see a child of yours come home with a necklace, a gold or diamond necklace that costs $10,000. And you don't ask where. And you're like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Okay. You see your child driving a Mercedes Benz. You don't ask your child, how did you buy it? And you are like, well, the, the friend gave it to him. Really? Well, one day the friend will send him to jail. You didn't want to ask. Because you are thinking, you are thinking that that child now is above you. Now has a source of income. Mom, I'm, I'm working. I'm working for somebody. You didn't take time to go and find out. Who is your son working for? Where is the pay stop? What is the name of the company? And some, some... I don't get it. Some mothers and fathers are such a bastard. In fact, that's why I, I came with this formula. There's nothing like a bastard child. There are only bastard mothers and fathers. Yeah, you don't want to know. You don't care. Your child leave home, came back from school, and then left home at 7 in the night. Why is your child not at home doing his, his or her school assignment? And then he's coming home at 3, 4 o'clock. You don't care to know where your child is. No, oh, he's 14. He's 18. He's 15 years. He's 16. My child is 17. He's 18. I don't need to worry. They are safe. Coming home at that time. Until... They call you and said he has shot somebody and is in jail. And then you start to call everybody to ask for money for you to go and bail your child out. I'm not coming. I'm not stupid. You knew. That child is giving you money. It's no two ways about it. You are getting money from your child. Don't, don't lie to me that you did not know. God looks at your heart. He looked deep inside you to see whether you are the type that has a mindset and a spirit set. You have the kind of spirit that if he tells you, come, go on a journey with me. Let's go and make some money. Let's go and do business. Let's go and do this. You will say, yes, my Lord. See, Saul is on his way to Tarsus to arrest Christians. Jesus appeared to him. 
and said, Saul, do you know you are walking against me? He said, who are you that I am walking against? He said, my name is Jesus. He said, really? He said, yep. Yeah. I thought this Jesus was dead. He said, I'm alive. I'm talking to you right now. You're going to save me. You're going to work for me. I see in you that if I show you myself, you will change. And that was true. And Saul became Paul. He changed. Abraham, come on a journey with me. I want to start nations with you. He said, yes, sir. Mary, you are going to be the mother of the Savior of the world. Yes, sir. How is it going to happen? The Holy Spirit will come upon you and do the transformation. Leave the rest with me. It's none of your business. Yes, sir. Moses, Moses, I'm sending you back to Egypt. You love to be a leader. Leadership now is on you. You qualify for it. Will you go? Well, I have this problem. I have this problem. I have said, forget about it. I can take care of it for you. I have given you Aaron. Aaron knows how to talk to people. You know how to get angry. Aaron knows how to balance it. Go. Yes, sir. That's all God is looking for. And if you look at the Bible, you see all those that all those that God visited and asked to go on a journey with him, they all say, yes, sir. Every one of them. And they were not people who were temporary assignments. They were for permanent assignments. They were not people that God invited and they stopped had, uh, halfway. Every one of them had three things. They had the good mindset. They had a good spirit. And there were people you can rely on for permanent journey with God. Because every invitation of God is a permanent, it's a full-time business. It's a full-time thing. It's not a temporary thing. If you look at them, they followed God throughout their life. They didn't stop anywhere. That's, that's one thing that will hit you about everyone whom God came for or everyone who went to God. There is a divine invitation being issued this afternoon. It has nothing to do with adoption. Those that he foreknew, that is for adult Christians who have come to stay with God permanently. It's for adult Christians, those kind of things, when you hear destiny, adoption, assignment, all of those things. It has to do with adult Christian thinking. People who will never leave God. People who have made their decision and their decision is final. It doesn't matter what happened. That decision is final. They are not going back. So I want you to be aware of that. Their decision is final. Mm -hmm. God is issuing an invitation to you. And say, come, let's go on a journey. Let's go and make money. How have you treated that invitation? Come, let's, I, I want to make you rich. I want to make you popular. And you are like, I, I don't want anybody to know me. Really. Yet the sons of darkness, every little position that comes out, they rush to get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every little way where there is money, they rush to get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God has asked me to extend an invitation to you. Now let me go to the second one divine intervention the reason why God is extending an invitation to you 
is if you accept it, then he will intervene in every area of your life. What's the next thing after divine intervention, divine engagement? God wants to engage you. When we say engage, he wants to interact with you. So one is divine intervention. The next is divine interaction. He want to have interaction with you. Are you ready? What is the next one? What's the last one? And the last one, divine appointment. Divine appointment. You are going to be appointed to something that is bigger than you that you did not expect. Divine appointment. You will only be given divine appointment because you answered divine invitation. I'm not talking about people who wake up one morning, God has called me. God has chosen me. And there is nothing that you can sh do to show that, yeah. If you tell somebody in Buddhism that you are an uh, a reincarnation of somebody else that has already died, they will tell you, all right, we are going to test it. Mm -hmm. In Buddhism, that's what they do. If you think that you have been called or chosen to, 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 to fulfill a particular rule, either in, an, a, an, in a Buddhist nation or in, in, either in the political, in the educational, in the final, they'll tell you, okay, you are the, you are the person that died. A hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, they keep their record very straight. And you say, yes, they tell you, we are going to test it. You know that they have they have ornaments, rings, gold, diamond, shoes, clothing of all of their great people who've come and gone. They have them. And they will bring them and mix them up. That's how the present Dalai Lama was chosen. The present Dalai Lama that lives in India, in exile, in India, that's how he was chosen. They mix up everything of everybody, and they ask him, go and choose what is yours there. Ha, ha, ha. They mix up everybody, everything look the same. They look alike. They ask you, pick what is yours. If you have been to this earth before, if you were that man, because you are looking for somebody who was that man to become this role, to play this role on the earth, to be given this throne, go and pick what is yours. Pick your necklace, Pick your ring, pick your shoe, pick your pant, pick your book, pick your this. All of them look the same. Go and pick what is yours. And the person will go and start picking what is theirs. And pick everything that belongs to the person who died a thousand years ago, a hundred years ago, fifty years ago, ten years ago, or how long ago, that is living inside that person's body. Or is that person that is alive now boom you pick it out they say yep that is it and they will come and look at it and they will tell you oh yeah that is it <laughs> so when you say that you are with god god has chosen you god has called you blah 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 what is it that you are able to do to prove to prove to show that really you have been chosen. Tell me about it. God is issuing an invitation to whoever wants it so that he can intervene in anything that you want to deal with. So that he can begin to engage you. And so that he can appoint you to things greater than you, events greater than you, businesses bigger than you, for you to build him something that is bigger than you. 
Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Yeah. Yes. Go, go and look at go and look at the Bible. Yeah. That is what yeah. is in the Bible. This is gonna be between you and yourself, not between you and God. You're gonna make that choice. Because for some of you, you are worshiping God out of a sense of fear. You are afraid. You are afraid of God. That's why you are not worshiping him out of love. You are not ministering to him. You are just doing a social thing. So I cannot even yet talk to you about how you can sit here, like where I am now, and you can transfer things to people wherever you want to. I can't even start to talk about how you can appear in three or four different places at the same time while you're in one place. I can't even start talking about that. I can't start to talk about how you can appear and disappear. I can't start to talk about how object can appear and disappear from your mind, using just your mind alone. You think that what you see in magic, real magic is real. But real magic is elementary to be compared to real miracles. Yeah. Many of you, many of you have not yet even started. You are thinking that until you reach the you reach heaven before you start to learn how to fly from one planet to the other. You know things immediately. You start now to know those things. You start now to practice those. If people in Hinduism, Buddhism, are practicing those things, somebody will walk to the other say, yeah, 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 sir, come here. In the crowd, who pull out somebody and say, come here. In the next five years, you are going to be a multi-billionaire. You are going to have a business that will produce things in the technological industries. You don't know it now, but I see it. You can go. And it all come to pass. The point, the Christianity has lost touch with this kind of people. That's why I've asked God to build me into this kind of formidable human being. So that I will be able to look at things and tell you once to go and do something. And you won't see me anymore. I will just go do it and boom, and I go my way. If you like it, Amen. you can do it. If you don't like it, that's your problem. God is extending divine invitation to you today so that he can solve your problem. He's not calling you to be a pastor or a teacher or an apostle or evangelist or a priest. He's not calling you to be a teacher of the world. He's asking you to be to engage the world out there because that is where God wants to enter and to possess is the world out there. And you say, no, he said, we are not part of the world. No, the world hates us and so on. He's talking about bad people in the world. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about this physical planet. This physical planet is your home. You own it. God is looking for people that he's going to visit and change their lives. People that will be willing for him to visit them. Like Jesus yeah. visited Paul on the way to Damascus. Cornelius was visited by angels. Ethiopian eunuch was visited by Philip. Are you going to allow God to visit you? Yes, sir. If I were you, I would spend time to watch these videos because these are very, very intense. Mm. It is when God begins to engage with you that you will begin to know about your location. You begin to know. You will. 
you begin to know yeah. how how to do things with ease easily things yeah. will be done for you easily let me share with you why god is inviting you want to intervene want to engage you want to appoint you one of the biggest reason is because god loves you and number two is because god want to look after you Amen. other people cannot look after you you've tried it they've all failed you and god want to make life easy for you eternal father your people are ready your people are ready yeah. <laughs> I want you to go and start thinking about this and begin to think about how you are going to use what I've just released to you to solve earthly problems go and begin to find ways to use it to solve your own problems God has his part to play you have your part to play the Holy Ghost and the angels have their part to play other human beings have their part to play I'll see you tonight at 7 p.m. Central, which is 8 p.m. Eastern. Bye-bye. An invitation has been released to you. Decide whether you want it or not. It is an invitation for you to prosper, an invitation for you to become young again. Do you want it? Amen. Yes. Eternal Father, they want it. Amen. Give them, give them, give them of your spirit to drink. Give them of your spirit to drink. Amen. 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 Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.